Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Alexei, and today I have a special guest, Roland Grappel. Roland Grappel is a legendary musician and guitarist. He had been playing with German power metal band Halloween for many years, and also he's a founder of another wonderful power metal band Masterplan. And right now Roland works as a sound engineer at his Grappel Studios, where he does recording, mixing, and mastering for different metal bands. So if you want Roland to record, mix, or master your song, you can book him. All links will be in the info box of this video. It's a huge honor to have you on my YouTube channel today, Roland, because I'm a huge fan of Halloween and Masterplan. So let's start our interview. My first question is how you became a guitar player. Uh, yeah, that's a long time ago. So. Um... In the 70s, uh, when I was uh, listening first metal bands or rock bands, I was 11 years old. Before, I was always, uh, you know, surrounded by my father and my brothers listening to Beatles stuff and like that in the 60s. But then my neighbor friend, uh, his older brother, uh, played me Grand Funk Railroad. And uh, so I was getting a big fan of Grand Funk, Uriah Heep, Deep Purple. Many more. I don't remember all of them. Many, many bands had just hits like T-Rex, Late, and all these bands. And But Grand Funk Railroad, Mark Farner was the idol uh, which impressed me the most. And I wanted to play guitar when I was 11, 12. And at the same time, I was also starting singing. So I was uh, singing and playing guitar with 12. And with 13, 14, I was pretty good already. How you started playing metal music? as a guitar player yeah like i said i started more like a rock player and uh like in the 70s and then uh, later when uh Judas priest came out i think the first songs i heard from them was 76 or something and then later came saxon and uh sorry all the messages coming <laughs> saxon and uh, Judas priest were the main influences um around 1980 81 and scorpions and msg michael schenker and so I started a band uh, around 81, I think, or, no, 80 or, or 79 even. I don't remember. It was Rampage uh, from Hamburg. And we did two uh, vinyl albums. And it was this lineup. And uh, from, I think, we split 81, 82. And that's how it started to be a little bit more heavy metal. And then at that one of the concerts, Michael Weicker saw me. So, and he remembered me. So that's why. Maybe next question. <laughs> Thank you so much. So next question is how you joined Halloween. Yeah, like I said, uh, Michael Weikers uh, started with Kai Hansen uh, Halloween, I think around 84. And he saw me in, in a concert with Rampage uh, in the Hamburg club called The Sound or Sound. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit older than these guys. So for him, I was already like, big hero from hamburg you know i think i was at that time one of the best guitar players eh? and also singer so nobody was singing this bluesy uh high singing mark farner voice like i have and uh, later of course when they started or getting serious famous in 86 or something um then i heard about them a little bit um not much till michael white has contacted me uh, it was uh, 1988 in the summer so when Kai wanted to leave and he just asked me if I still play guitar and uh, he saw me in the concert and uh, he would like to have me as a guitar player. And I said, yeah, but I don't know Halloween. So I saw pictures, I heard about the name, but I never heard the music. So he invited me and played me three, four, five songs. The most not so heavy metal, like I Want Out, A Tale Wasn't Right. I think Future World, Eagle, and I think Dr. Stein, that was, that was everything. The rest he played me many months later. So he asked me and I said, okay, I'm interested, but um, they were still on tour with Kai Hansen and, and Christmas he was leaving the band and uh, then I had my audition. And uh, so just three, four months later. And then we went in March, I guess, already to America for touring. So that's how it started. That was... Christmas 88, he asked me. How you were working on composing songs in the 90s? Because right now we have a lot of those and different apps. You know, we have like Pro Tools, Logic Studio One, Guitar Pro. Back in the days, you know, when people didn't have different kinds of those. So how did you compose music 
for Halloween before going to the studio? Yeah, I think I think it was one of the first guys who who started with a music program. I think it was uh, it was Commodore 64 at that time, and uh, so in the nineties, I guess we had all PCs and. Uh, with Cubase, something I, I was a bit endorsed with Cubase in the beginning, but I was never happy. It was always crashing. And uh, but basically, in the middle of the nineties, I guess I had already um, Apple computer, and uh, we had all Logic. You know, we wrote all the songs on Logic, as I remember. All the band members had Logic, and it was easy to share ideas and 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 give the songs to the other guys to work on, and uh, so. We always had computers. I never wrote songs just on a cassette player. What did you learn as a musician after working with Halloween? I think I learned a lot uh, from from each band member, from from especially working with the producers. You know, there was an old school kind of work uh, in the beginning, like everybody was uh, writing for themselves. And we had a little bit brainstorming about uh, songwriting, about making songs better. Some guys helped me, like Waiki was very close to me in the beginning, especially. Uh, helping me with my song The Chance or Mankind and, and these kind of songs. Later, everybody was more separate, more fighting for himself. So when I had Time of the Oath, I, I, I wrote everything alone. And then uh, Andy Darius heard it and said, yeah, can I write the lyrics? I love the song. Can I write the lyrics? And so that's that's how it was. It was kind of teamwork, but basically everybody delivered a finished song. And that was... Um, kind of interesting because everybody had different songwriting but i learned a lot from each guy in the band and especially the last album i really enjoyed which was not the best moment for the band or for me it was the dark ride album because then we worked with charlie bauerfeind and my friend roy z so on roy z he opened my my view about um guitar sound playing it how to play guitar um Going back to the old roots, because in Rampage I was more like like a Les Paul Gibson player. I had a Stratocaster as well, but more like Humbucker, like Eddie Van Halen. And that was a bit missed by Halloween. So Waiki told me, why you not play like like your old style, like Rampage style? And and, and, and Roy also told me this, because they were a bit tired about my Stratocaster, Ingby kind of playing. And uh, so the down tuning on the dark ride was something totally new for me. I never had tried it before. So the guitar production, uh, how we recorded the rhythm guitars, everything was different there. And this was really impressive for me and really uh, eye opener. So I still keep it in a, in a way what I learned there from the dark ride, especially and from the other guys. So, you know, always when I write a song nowadays, also I'm thinking, how would Make a, make Andy Darius writing it or how Mikey would write it. You know, they had all different ideas and I still keep it somehow in my memory. And especially now production wise from the Roy Z, the dark ride was the biggest impressive part. You know, I worked with Chris Sangaridis, with, uh, you know, Tommy Hansen and uh, many more. Hopefully I didn't forget anyone. <laughs> And uh, but this was an eye opener after leaving Hello. So my next question is, how did you create Master Plan? Oh, uh, there was a kind of um, easy way in a way. Of, you know, it was not a decision of us, like Uli Kush and me, because we were both um, got dropped from the band Halloween or fired, how you want to say it or call it. And uh, so I said to Uli, let's stay together. And um, we had, had an idea to make a solo album before, like six months before. But then when we were separate from Halloween, we decided to make it more serious and more stronger than we wanted to do. You know, We wanted to have our own lineup, our own singer, not just a project. And uh, immediately uh, we started the band. And we had many songs written already, which was easier. So like 60% of the material was written. And uh, then we had two months. I was still writing with Uli um, another four songs. And uh, in the meantime, we were searching singer. So we had uh, Russell Allen from uh, Symphony X in mind. But he didn't want to join the band. He wanted just seeing it as a project. And then I said, OK, let's search somebody else. We need some you know, our own singer. Then we had the gr great idea to ask Mikey Kiske which was also a solo in, the, in that moment. 
And he he agreed to sing maybe a song for us, but not the whole album, he said. You know, he was not into heavy metal at that, at that time, like many people know. And then uh, Uli and I, we heard on tour before we were fired, um, a new band called Ark, or The Ark. I remember, and there was with uh, Jorn Lande singing. And so we contacted him and, and we really loved his voice and thought this would be something special. So everything was really, really quick. So beginning of August, we were fired. And in October, we recorded already with Andy Sneap and my favorite producer, by the way. And uh, yeah, Christmas, Jorn Lande was flying into my studio in Hamburg and listening to the material, which was already recorded. So guitars were done, the drums were done. Um, many vocal melodies, ideas we had already. And uh, so that's, that's how we started. It was a really quick period. So everything was like in four or five months. How guitar tone or guitar tones was or were created for Halloween and Masterplan? It was very kind of old school. Um, I used just a Marshall, um, mostly my Fender guitar, some, some, um, some pedal to make a boosting. It's a DOD 250, the same like um, Ingvi J. Mams, Mamsin is using. Um, that was my tone, the pedal, the guitar, the amp, and the cabinet, that's it. Um, we had many, many trouble to get really nice uh, metal metal tone with a Fender Stratocaster, you know. But I loved the sound so much, like like um, like early Deep Purple, like Machine Head album, or Ingvi, especially in the beginning, the warmer tone he had. And uh, so I tried to get this in, in my own way. My Marshall was minimum of modified not really modified but uh, uh, had a, it was a stock 90s amp in the, in the beginning i used really old amps but they all basically sounded the same you know they were just crunchy and not really metal but with a booster i, I made it really uh, singing and screaming and uh, uh, later i had this modification a send return with a active uh, volume knob so there was an extra tube inside and uh, sometimes I boosted it with one cable, just a bit extra gain on the, on the power amp. So that was my tone for many, many years. And on a dark ride, we made it totally different. So we used many times Gibson kind of guitars, down tune guitars. We used uh, first time Mesa Boogie, Marshall, Pot, and M Farm plugin. So we used four signals to make the rhythm guitar sound. So, and, uh, there was something new for me, you know. There was, of course, a, this kind of face issues, and uh, but Charlie Bauerfeind took care about it, and uh, so he was lining all the signals that everything sounded great, perfect, you know. So that was the biggest difference between all the albums before was basically just a microphone before the cabinet, and on the dark right we had two amps at the same time, two cabinets, then this pot, the old one, red one, and. Uh, Amp farm plugin from yeah, also uh, line line six. So that's that's how it changed. And and master plan, I continued uh, with a uh, Mesa Boogie, and the Mesa Boogie ah first first album was the Marshall Cabinet with Vintage Thirty, and the second was uh, Mesa Boogie Cabinet uh, Big One uh, also with Vintage Thirty. It was new, uh, but it's from two thousand one. That means that was the best year from the Vintage Thirty. You know. And my, my Marshall speaker, vintage 30 in the Marshall cabinet were two, three years older. They were also beautiful. So the, these two cabinets are still my favorite. And till, till now, I, I tried many albums uh, of a master plan different. Sometimes I used six rhythm guitars. So with different amps or with different uh, plugins added, you know, but basically now, I used 10 years already camper and I had a lot of uh, good, good uh, sounds in, in my camper, which is like Eddie Van Halen amplifier, you know, this kind of 5150 new one three. And uh, so I'm using both whatever is uh, great sounding, but I'm not so, for master plan, not so happy about using plugins too much. I, I did many times when I'm mixing bands and uh, because for me, it's when the result is good, it's good. but you know, I try always the best with, with my gear I have in the studio. So I want to try it and not just ignoring it and leaving it. I have so many amps and cabinets here. So 
uh, sh should at least try it, you know, <laughs> even there's some, some very good uh, M simulation out. How you became a sound engineer? Oh, uh, that was a, it's an interesting question. So basically I came very late, um, I think it's 15 years ago, to that point. I had just a simple question to the record label. I said, can, can we get some more advances for the next album or something? And said, no, in the moment it's not possible. The next album you should deliver in one or two years. It's too early. And then he asked me, you have a studio? And I was living already in Slovakia. And uh, basically my studio was always just for my own band. You know, my old studio in Hamburg was for Halloween, for my part recording ideas. Later, I had a uh, master plan recording in Hamburg, and then I left to Slovakia, and then had much bigger studio, really big enough. And then the guy from AFM Records said, why are you not recording some bands in your studio and make some extra money? <laughs> so that's how it started. And coincidence was, the first band asked me uh, was an Italian band, Daedalus, and uh, that I said, yeah, can we record in your studio? And then I said, okay, let's give it a try. I didn't know anything. I, I just recorded with Andy Sneep. Um, Sneep, the first album, Master Plan, second album, Aeronautics. We did uh, drums, rhythm guitars only, and some bass. And then he said, hey, you can record alone. I, I don't need to be on the overdubs or vocal parts. I know, I know how to do it, but my gear was always pretty good. I bought in a... 90s from the studio in Hamburg where Halloween recorded uh, Neve preamps. I had a uh, Massenburg EQ. I had many Urise uh, 11, 1176, which I sold. I regretted it. And even I had studio machines. So I had two studio machines, which I don't have anymore. So, but my gear was pretty good from the beginning. So I always had the wish to record my own guitar sound at home. Like like Ingvi did in the past, so in the nineties. Anyway, so that's how it started. So Daedalus was the first band, and then uh, the second was a Czech band called X Core. And when everybody heard the production, the whole Slovakian and, and Czech Republic wanted to record in my studio, and I was happy. And since then, I made many hundred bands. So and uh, so basically, everything I learned in the beginning was just by coincidence. I didn't know how to use a compressor, to be honest. But it sounded good. I had a good guitar sound. Um, Andy Sneep showed me how to make this, uh, you know, samples on the drums and all of this stuff. Editing drums was a big part of it. And um, so I went every two years to England to, to visit him for a weekend. And so he teach me many things. And then I'm really thankful for that. So it gave me some business in this kind of recording and mixing business. What is the best way to become a sound engineer nowadays? So should you get a real education or should you work as a studio? Uh, yeah, I think it's totally different now. Nowadays, everything is like in the 70s, guitar players needed to play guitar at home with a vinyl, with friends showing them there was no internet. Nowadays, it's so so different, so easy to, to get lessons online. Um, I can just say for myself, the best is to, to get in contact as a band member or something with studios and try to ask the producer if they can teach you something, you know, or if you get some job there for a while, you know, like for some months when you're young enough and don't need the money to get living or something. I think nothing is more, more, let's say, positive than from an experienced guy to get some lessons, you know. Because there's so many, many information online, which is right or wrong, you can call it. Everybody has a different view. I'm still watching everyday videos and I say, okay, this is interesting. And I'm, oh, let's try this as my new mix, you know. So in, in the moment, I'm mixing uh, drums for Master Plan. And uh, I did it now four days or something. I, I really spend my time making some editing and stuff. But every day I learn something on the internet and uh, it's pretty cool. But Basically, how to use EQing and, and compressing, you should, should learn it really from the beginning. I, I came very late. You know, I was not really interested as a guitar player, to be honest, for many, many years. I just, my first solo album, album I made in 97, I recorded at home in my studio when I had a Neve EQ and I made just by, by my ear. I don't know what I did, but it sounded good. And But mixing, 
I didn't know what to do. I just make level and, and a panorama. That's it. You know, I didn't do it, but it sounded okay. Not perfect. But, but if you know and you have the experience, that, that's it's a big, big kind of uh, positive thing. You know, you don't need, you, but people should not expect that you learn everything in one year. It's a long process. I'm, I'm doing this job 15 years and I'm still learning. Do you mix hybrid or in the box? I can't remember that I did uh, in the box. 100%. I always use some outboard gear. Um, you know, when, when, when Master Plan was mixed, uh, the first album, it was uh, 2001 or two. It was in Finland, in, in, in Finvox studio. And I watched uh, Miko Camilla, uh, how he mixed our album, and he's a very friendly guy. And I said, what are you using there on the mix bus and stuff like that? So I, of course, then I bought the same stuff and and use it since then. So it's it's a it's a Crane Imperial Labs Fatso I use. I have an SSL from Allen Smart style compressor and an RP five thousand five hundred EQ, which is always the same setting. It's just it goes through and then I'm mixing into it. And I call it the Finvox uh, chain, you know. <laughs> but he has also a uh, one device I had in the beginning, it's a Dominator from Aphex, and I'm not using it anymore because it started making noise and it's very old from the 80s, so I don't want this old stuff. I'm very unhappy when something doesn't work. I had many, many trouble with uh, API stuff because this um, chip inside, or how you call it, is 25 something. It always breaks after some years, you know, and uh, you have to buy a new one. It's pretty expensive. So, but I love to have outboard gear, and also now um, I have a distra two distressors here. I love to have on 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 my drums, drum bus, and uh, sometimes you know I was inspired by Michael Brower. He had it on the, on the drum bus with a bass together. Um, I use a different way, just for low end, the kick and the, and the low end. So that's I learned something two three weeks ago, and I use it on the new mix of Lords of Black, which I finished already. And they were mega happy, and me, me as well. So you see, you learn always. You, you can't say, I mixed something 10 years ago and I do it the same. You know, I always try to improve and to get more and more in, in the way that you feel happy, you know. But many times I did, uh, I had also a long time ago, I had in this kind of Neve 8816 uh, summing amp, how you call it. Now, my favorite is maybe my Spider. It, it's an H channel, uh, you know, from. Yeah, this is very expensive stuff, but it has eight preamps, but eight channels or ten. Uh, you can make also a summing amp kind of stuff. Yeah. I have many stuff to use. I have my newest maybe devices are from Warm Audio. It's the it's a pull textile, which I have here in the back. Too. And it's um uh, I use it for guitar, rhythm guitar, and uh so sometimes I have you know, buying and trying, and then I'm selling it if I don't don't use it. You know, later than it's many things you you think maybe I should try this or try that, like this producer or that, and then you feel it's not working for me. You need to try to find your own yeah kind of style. Also, I have my tube tech uh, stereo compressor, which I love sometimes, but doesn't work always. But it's really great on overhead, so I, I love to have it on overhead. What is your opinion on Atmos mixing? Because right now everybody is talking about Atmos. I still don't understand what Atmos is and why you should use it in your mixes. But uh, I'd like to know your opinion about Atmos mixing in general. To be honest, I never thought really much about it because there was this long time people made, uh, you know, mixing in 5.1 and all this stuff. And I never had any mix like that. Um, it's basically more more interesting when you make a DVD for life, you know, this kind of stuff. But this Atmos, I tried to read about it and I, I still don't get it. It's, for me, it's more like about movies or, or film. And of course, then it has some sense because you get this kind of surrounding effects and stuff. But if you hear metal, I, I don't see the reason so far. You know, maybe I'm too old school now already. <laughs> But I don't, I'm not really interested so far with what it is about. You know, I, I have Pro Tools, but I have everything inside. I can, I could use it, but maybe if I have too much time, maybe I should try something. But no, for me, it's not important in the moment, you know.
the same, I think one question we forgot is this RE technology. You know, this is also something scary, you know, when, when the computer decides uh, how to mix for you or something or mastering, you know, this is kind of stuff. Um, I hope it's not happening that all our jobs get, you know, not, not you know, important anymore. But uh, definitely uh, this technology has some positive parts. You know, I saw some some videos. Of course, Isotope has something like analyzing your mix and see if you're in the right balance and stuff like that, which is helpful. But basically, I'm getting more and more secure about my my work that I don't watch this stuff. You know, it's like <clears throat> like uh, when when a plugin deciding for you, this is the EQ setting which is perfect and. But it's all about taste, you know. It's, it's like uh, same with the compressing stuff, and uh, I'm I'm really really mixing with ears and 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 try to to. It's I'm not a guy who's mixing fast, to be honest. I, I take my time. Sometimes um, I change everything in a couple of days. You know, I said, nah, that's not right. Let's try again from the start. You know, because I had so many mixes that I made. In a different direction, and sometimes I'm analyzing. This was cool. This wasn't cool. And uh, but you can't always say it works for every band or every every production. So you have to try and try and error is the best way to learn. But yeah, we see what the future will bring. In the moment, I'm still happy with my normal work. <laughs> Thank you so much for such a wonderful conversation. It was a huge honor talking to you because I'm a huge fan of Halloween and the master plan. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful work and I really appreciate your time talking to me. Thank you very much. Thanks for the for thank for the interview. <laughs>